Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall be covering the Avro Lancaster's Fraser Nash FN20 rear gun turret. We shall be referring to the wartime air ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. I hope you find this interesting. The Lancaster's rear turret, type FN20, which forms the extreme rear end of the fuselage, is mounted on a support ring after the end former. The ring is carried by an angle section member passing round the end of the fuselage and extending forward to former 39, being riveted to the skin and to brackets on the formers. A semicircular angle section member carries the forward portion of the ring and tubular struts from formers 39 and 41 support it at each side and the front. Below the turret is the end fairing of the fuselage in which is fitted an inspection cover immediately beneath the centre of the turret giving access to the hydraulic pipe connections. The rear turret has servo feed and is supplied with ammunition by means of four ammunition boxes and ducts. On each side of the fuselage, two boxes are attached to the fuselage four by means of brackets bolted to the floor members and to formers 20, 21 and 22. The boxes are of light alloy sheet with channel section ends and bottoms, the side panels being strengthened by top hat section stiffeners. From each box, a duct is led aft the inner duct on either side dropping below and turning under the outer duct. The ducts curve down, bringing those on the starboard side below the doorstep and continue along the fuselage to a position below the turret. Covers secured by spring clips are fitted to the ducts aft of former 38. The FN20 gun turret is a partially rotating, hydraulically operated turret for installation in the tail of the aircraft, mounting four Browning 0.303 inch guns and fitted with a transparent cupola to protect the air gunner from the airstream. Standard ammunition ducts are used and they are supported in brackets bolted to the formers. The sections are joined by means of end brackets pinned together, the pins being removable and secured by a short chain to one of the brackets. Each box holds 1,900 rounds and each duct 600 rounds, that is 2,500 rounds for each of the four guns. This system permits an increased quantity of ammunition to be carried at one loading, as the ammunition boxes are carried in the airframe instead of within the turret. The boxes can therefore be of relatively large size and their weight brought nearer the centre of gravity of the aircraft. The ammunition belts are drawn into the turret by the servo feed mechanism over rollers on the ammunition boxes and through ducts attached to the airframe. The belts enter the turret through two guides situated in the fixed centre section of the turret floor. Two ammunition belts entering each guide. The belts are pulled upwards by the servo feed mechanism and fed to the guns through guides in the gun cradle journals. Guards are fitted between the servo feed mechanism and the turret floor to protect the air gunner's legs from the moving belts. Empty cartridge cases and belt links are ejected from the guns into chutes which pass through the front of the cupola. Armour plate panels are fitted to the front of the turret and move up and down as the guns are elevated and depressed, thus providing protection for the air gunner when the guns are fully elevated and causing no interference of view when the guns are depressed. Hydraulic power for operating the turret is obtained from the hydraulic pump driven by the port outer Merlin engine. The pump circulates oil under pressure through pipes passing through the release valve of the recuperator, the pressure side of the low pressure relief valve and the external rotation valve, finally entering the turret through the rotation service joint. 
Pressure gauges are fitted on the main supply and return pipes between the relief valve and the external rotation valve. From the rotation service joint, the pressure supply enters the valve box. If the master valve is not being operated, the oil is returned through the exhaust port of the rotating service joint and through the external rotation valve and the relief valve, a filter and the release valve of the recuperator. Back to the engine driven pump, thus providing free circulation. When the master valve is operated, the rotation and elevation valves and the servo feed motor are connected to the pressure oil supply and operation of these valves by the air gunner's movement of the control handles supplies pressure oil to the turret rotation hydraulic motor and to the gun elevation rams and auxiliary ram respectively. The exhaust oil returning from these components passes through the valve box and the rotation service joint to the suction side of the engine driven pump. The turret is supported by a circular rotating ring which passes in ball bearings in a fixed ring bolted to the airframe. It is rotated by a hydraulic motor mounted on the rotating ring. The motor spindle extending through the ring and carrying a pinion which engages with the stationary circular gear rack attached to the fixed ring. The accommodation ring secured to the upper side of the rotating ring carries the turret frame and supports the cupola. A turret drum in which the rotating service joint, valve box and control handles are mounted is attached to the underside of the rotating ring. The air gunner's seat, which is adjustable for height, is mounted on the accommodation ring and a Mills lap type safety belt is anchored to brackets on each side of the seat. The turret frame is a built up structure consisting of two outer side frames supported on the accommodation ring and bridged at the top and two inner side frames which extend from the bridge to the floor of the turret drum. The central part of the turret drum floor is secured to the airframe and does not rotate with the turret. It anchors the fixed body of the rotating service joint and is fitted with guides through which the four ammunition belts pass from the airframe into the turret. The valve box and the rotating body of the rotating service joint are mounted on a bracket projecting from the turret drum. The control handles operating the control valves are fitted on a column mounted vertically above the valve box at a convenient height for the air gunner and are connected to the valve box by linkage. The traverse of the turret is limited by stops attached to the fixed ring. A rotation stop lever, pivoted on a bracket bolted to the accommodation ring, comes into contact with the stops when full traverse is reached, the shock being absorbed by rubber buffers. A hand rotation gear is mounted on the rotating ring at the right hand side of the air gunner, enabling the turret to be rotated by hand from inside the turret. The turret can be locked in the central position by a rotating lock fitted on the accommodation ring at the left hand side of the air gunner. A drift scale is mounted on the turret fixed ring and a glazed window in the accommodation ring enables the air gunner to read off the number of degrees through which the turret is rotated when it is moved to either side of the central position in taking drift. The cupola consists of a tubular framework with moulded transparent panels and is bolted to the accommodation ring. The transparent panels are attached to the framework by clamping bolts passing through the tubular frame members, a jointing compound being used between the panels and the framework. The vertical members of the framework are attached at their lower ends to a fairing in which holes are drilled, which register with holes for the attachment bolts in the accommodation ring. Two openings at the front of the cupola, between the front panel and each side panel, form gun slots through which the guns and empty cartridge case and link chutes project. 
Ventilators are provided in the top panels above the gun slots. Four lifting lugs bolted to vertical frame members provide attachments for use when lifting the turret by slings. Two access doors are fitted in the rear of the cupola and are arranged to open and close by sliding in guide channels inside the cupola. The doors are locked in the closed position by a locking catch and two locking bolts on the right hand door. The locking catch engaging with a catch pin on the left hand door. A hand slide accessible through a hand slot in the port door, situated at a convenient height for operation by the air gunner, is connected by linkage to the locking bolts. Movement of the slide withdraws the bolts and also raises the locking catch, permitting the door to be opened. The four Browning guns are mounted on two similar but handed gun cradles, which are pivoted on bearings in the inner and outer side frames. The guns are secured to the cradles by front and rear attachments, the rear attachment providing horizontal and vertical adjustment for gun alignment. The guns are elevated and depressed by the action of the gun elevation rams, which are pivoted on a bearing tube mounted between the inner side frames. The ram piston rod ends are connected by quick release bolts to levers fixed to the torque tube which is carried in bearings in the inner side frames and extends through them. A rocking lever is fixed to each projecting end of the torque tube and is connected to a gun cradle by two links. To achieve smooth and even movement of the gun cradles the levers on the torque tube are set at different angles, necessitating a longer stroke from one gun elevation ram. This is obtained by having one ram slightly longer than the other. The armour plate consists of three sections having guide rollers which travel in guide channels in the inner side frames. A sight radius arm carrying the gun sight mounted in a clamp ring, bridges the two armour plate operating levers and moves with them. Thus the extension or retraction of the gun elevation rams rotates the torque tube, the movement being transferred to the gun cradles by the rocking levers and links. Movement of the gun cradles is transferred to the upper section of the armour plate through the links, upper rocking levers and the armour plate operating levers. The sight radius arm is therefore moved in unison with the gun cradles. The action of the gun elevation rams is assisted by the auxiliary hydraulic ram. Empty cartridge cases and belt links are ejected through slots in the base of each gun cradle into the chutes attached to the turret frame. Palmer hydraulic firing control mechanism is fitted to each of the guns and is operated through Bowden cables from firing triggers attached to the control handles. A hand operated fire and safe unit is also fitted to each gun. Electrical current for the gun sight lamp, floodlight and heating and connections for the intercommunication are brought from the aircraft through flexible cables entering the turret through a fixed centre section of the turret floor. An external rotation valve fitted in the airframe is incorporated in the hydraulic system, enabling the turret to be rotated in an emergency from inside the airframe. When operated, this valve connects the pressure oil supply direct to the turret rotation motor, bypassing the rotating service joint and valve box. The oxygen supply for the air gunner is brought into the turret through a central tube in the rotating service joint to a bayonet socket situated in front of the air gunner. Here are Air Ministry instructional steps on how to operate the turret. Entrance to the turret is through the sliding doors situated in the rear of the cupola, which are opened by pushing the doors outwards, 
using the hand slides to operate the locking catch. After entering the turret, close the doors by pushing them together using similar hand slides on the inside of the doors. For power operation of the turret, the relative positions of the controls and instructions for operating the turret, together with the sequence in which the operations are to be done, are as follows. Attach safety belt. Plug into intercommunication socket. Plug into oxygen supply. Disengage rotation lock. Ensure clutches are set in position marked in. Set fire and safe unit on each gun to fire. Switch on gun sight switch. Depress master valve control levers and move control handles as desired for turret operation. Press firing triggers to fire the guns. The hand levers in the control column must be depressed fully to operate the master valve, thus powering the turret. Move the control handles anti-clockwise for left rotation and clockwise for right rotation. Tilt the control handles forward to depress the guns and backwards for gun elevation. Combined movement of the handles will produce corresponding movement of the guns. The speed of operation of the turret is dependent upon the amount of movement given to the control handles. It is not intended that the master valve shall be used as a speed controller. After setting the fire and safe units to fire, the guns are fired by pressing the triggers on the control handles. It is important to note that the fire and safe units must always be set back at safe when taking off or landing. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing, and also click the bell. Remember it's free, and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.